It's not pen or anything, but it's fine. I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Alhamdulillah. It's been so long since I've seen you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. We just subhanallah. So it's been it's been a minute. How long has it been? Like what? A few hours, hours at least. <laughs> Mashallah. Yeah, how did you like the how did you like the the tour? SubhanAllah, I completely forgot that, that we had a meeting today with uh, with the Furqan project. I don't know how I remembered, so I can't imagine. I can, I don't see how you can keep everything straight. This is all just new to me and this is just Yeah, yeah. no alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Not much. Just I've been kind of reading through the the books that um, that I got from the the bookstore, but retaining any of the information right now. <laughs> that's that's yeah. a different story. <laughs> It takes time. It takes time. It's all right. Just, just be, you know, take it easy on yourself and just, you know, find yourself a nice steady pace and go from there. Inshallah. For me, coffee really helps. But if I drink coffee right now, I'm going to be, I'm going to be up until the next Ramadan. I don't know. Weren't you just making coffee? You were making that bougie coffee. It's, Weren't you yeah. just making it? The bougie. <laughs> <laughs> it was bougie coffee. I heard it. That's what I was putting in the comments. I was like, I, I, I know bougie coffee when I hear it. Like it was, it was a fancy machine. I could hear it. It was doing all this kinds of, kinds of grinding and and stuff. So then, you know, I just know. And when it's in a glass coffee mug, that's how you know, because that means there's going to be layers. <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I wrong? <laughs> No, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong. You're absolutely right. I feel like George Clooney now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. So listen, listen. Stop judging me. Five seconds in the live, you're already judging me. <laughs> Come on, man. I thought we were buddies. I thought we were friends. There's no judgment. I just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's what everyone exactly. that judges you says. They always say, hey, no judgments. Really, inside their head, they're judging. <laughs> Have your bougie coffee. You're, you're boycotting Starbucks, so it's a, a win is a win. No, I'm not. No, now, just for that, I'm not going to have any more coffee. I'm just going to go to Harada's and get my coffee there. <laughs> <laughs> and now, well, actually, they do latte art and all that. That's... It's the same level of bougie, if not more. That's, no, that's even more bougie. It is more bougie. But it's so worth it, though, honestly. Shout out that to Haraz. So I'm good. not there in the live stream, but... Yeah. That was so good. Alhamdulillah. You got any questions for me? Let's keep this interesting. I'm trying to think. Hold on. Let me get my cut off. Mm. Let me see. Oh. See, I like lightly put on my hijab. I have to, there's no pins or anything holding it together right now. All good, do you think? Let me see. Um, dun, dun, dun. Okay, we already went through some of these last time, so let me find some one that we did not go through yet. No, oh, guys, listen, I'm, I'm looking at the comments. I'm <laughs> don't get any ideas. Chill. <laughs> what are the comments saying? I'm looking at the comments. I didn't realize how I looked. <laughs> what? What are y'all saying in the comments? Haram. He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> These people are on one, man. <laughs> see, now I'm distracted. Now I'm looking at these comments to see what 
what y'all saying? Anyway, I'm sure it was Haram though. Yeah, it was, it was Haram. <laughs> In the of law, guys, come on. Okay, I do have a question for you. This one up. I have only read like it says there's seven layers of heaven. Mm. Like one on top of each other. One above one above the other. But I've only heard two described. I've only heard like the the first two layers described. And it talks about how there's a river of honey, a river of wine, a river of milk, a river of fresh water, mm. canopied couches all kinds of good stuff like what let's dive into the seven layers of heaven like what gotcha. are they what's the difference between them there's a difference between heaven in the quran and paradise in the quran really mm -hmm. so heaven means universe in the quran paradise there's only one paradise so Jannah is the paradise. Jannah is the paradise. The Jannah. one paradise that has billions and billions of other paradises that are in it, like billions of gardens in it. So the word Jannah in Arabic means garden, right? Okay. So this one huge garden, Ardu has samawati wal ard. Its width is all of the seven heavens and the earth combined, right? So seven heavens is universes. Now, when our Prophet وسلم, he traveled from Mecca to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and then from Jerusalem to, to, to Palestine, he then ascended with Gabriel to the seven heavens and above that, right? So he saw the fire, he saw the people in paradise, he saw his house in paradise, he saw the people that are in paradise. He heard the pitter patter of Bilal in paradise, you know what I mean? All of that he saw, Ainul Yaqeen, he saw this with his own two eyeballs, right? So, seven heavens, seven mm -hmm. universes. The Prophet Sallallahu he said that when he was with Gabriel and he reached the gates of this, the first heaven, he said that this one is the smallest one. The gate of this, the, the universe of this dunya, Sama'ud dunya, the heaven of this dunya, mm -hmm. is the smallest one. This one, compared to the one above it, is a ring in a desert. Does that make sense? It does. But if there is, so if we have our own like layer, so to speak, of this universe, are there other, how do I put this? Is it speaking to other realities that like other humans exist in the seven other universes? Certainly. Where do you think Jesus is right now? Jesus is in the fourth universe. He's in the fourth heaven. What? Mm -hmm. Jesus is in the fourth heaven. The messengers are all in their own par They're all in their own heaven right now. They're not in paradise. No one is in paradise right now yet. They are, for example, Abraham is in the seventh heaven. He's teaching children that have died in this world. He's teaching them the Quran. Right, uh, Noah, Moses, he's in the set, is in the sixth heaven, and so on and so forth. Right, so they are alive. They are alive, just not in their actual bodies. Right, Ex with the exception of Jesus, the Son of Mary. Now, this universe that we're in right now, uh -huh. right, this universe that we're in right now, compared to the one above it, is like a ring in a desert. The second, compared to the third, is like a ring in a desert. The third compared to the fourth is like a ring in a desert all the way up until you get to the seventh. The seventh heaven, the seventh universe compared to the throne of Allah, the throne of God is like a ring in a desert. Right now. The Prophet ﷺ, when he said that he, he was in the presence of the divine, he obviously didn't see him. Right, because he was in his original body, his original form. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that the Hamlet Raj, the angels that are carrying the throne of God. He said just the distance between their earlobe and their shoulder, just a small distance is all of the seven universes and earth combined. Oh my, this is wild. The, the angels carrying the throne of God are, are so large 
that it's the equivalent of all seven universes. So and the Earth. billions of galaxies we like just the, just all of the, so time seven and the Earth. And that's how oh, what? just that small distance from the, the reaction though. <laughs> Like, ain't this y'all's reaction? Like, that's that's wild. That's bananas. <laughs> Wait. Subhanallah. Yeah. No, they're known as Hamilat al Ash, you know. Uh, they are very big, but they're not as big as Gabriel. Gabriel himself is his original form is bigger than that. Yeah. Gabriel, he's one of the archangels. Gabriel, Michael, Mikael, Israfil, you know, Israfel. These are the strongest angels. So the Hamlet al Arsh, there's eight of them. The eight angels that are carrying the throne of God, they are, we can't even conceptualize. We can't even understand how big they are, how massive they are. You know, and it's a mercy for us. It's a mercy for us, really, because there are, there are people that have wanted to see angels in their true form, but they couldn't. You know, uh, it literally, our, our eyeballs, we can't. You know, our, our bodies are so limited, it literally burn us up. We can't even, you know. But once we leave our bodies, once the soul leaves the body, we're able to see everything as it is, you know. So. So, okay. So in this universe, there is an earth. Is there a... So what I'm saying is I know that... The, I know that, like, Moses, Noah, etc., Gabriel... Like they're on different levels. Well, Gabriel's like, you know, but I'm just saying they're on different levels. What I'm saying, like, is there earth in each level as well? Like, is, are there seven earths to go with the, since they're universes? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Is it like that a, is something I don't know, to be honest with you. That's something, okay. that's something I don't know. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there's other planets and stuff like that. But um, I don't know that. That's something that's, you know, God creates what you don't know. You know, so um, the anthropic principle now is this is something that a lot of astrophysicists, they talk about, is everything in this universe was created just to give you life, just to sustain life on this planet. Um, is there other creations out there? It could be. Is there not? also could be it's a possibility what i do know is that god creates what we don't know right so these other universes there might be other planets i don't know you know there might be a completely different creation different than planets different than anything like that you know what i mean i just we just don't know until once we leave this this earth and once we're on judgment we're in judgment day god said that he's going to explain it all to us why seven heavens why seven universes why one paradise that's width is all the seven heavens and the earth combined. What what's the meaning of all of this? You know, that's what I'm looking forward to. This is amazing. This is amazing. Hold on, hold on. I need a minute. This is amazing. so so. You weren't expecting that one, were you? I wasn't. I wasn't because no, you don't understand. My obsession prior to joining Islam was science. So and and still is. So like this is this is matching everything I've learned about science. So so Islam doesn't close because I'm also a, like I like I said before I was a student of other religions, and they sort of close the possibility of anything existing outside of human beings. So Islam it keeps that possibility open and is basically saying. We don't know what we don't know. Like God knows what we don't know. And yeah. it's not for us to So then is the Quran Well, I guess you wouldn't know. <laughs> like only God knows, but would then I just want to I just want to go on a philosophical like road right now. Would then the Quran be the human message? And would then there be a different message for other creatures depending on what God created? How do you mean, like other cre uh, creatures, like the jinn? 
this the sprites you mean i mean the gym but like if there's a possibility of like other life in in the seven other universes do you think it's one Quran that's shared with all seven universes or do you think the it the Quran would have to be like the same message essentially but would it have to be changed to fit like the different languages and everything of the other universe well i guess it would right Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna ansalnahu fi laylatul qadr wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr we have brought down the quran on laylatul qadr the pow- the night of power right which is mm-hmm. it's a, you know it's the 27th uh, according to some of our scholars or most of our scholars but again only god knows um so it was revealed to the seven it was revealed to the smallest universe to this universe that we're in now one time and then over 23 years كان منزلا ومفرقا over 23 years it was revealed piecemeal little bit by little bit to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam depending on the depending on the, the the times and the incidents around the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right now do the angels know that there's a quran absolutely right have they heard all of it not all of them have some of them have some of them haven't you know what i mean but like for example ridwan uh ridwan he's known as the he's known as the he's an angel that he's the gatekeeper of paradise right he's the one that opens up the paradise so um for example he when he says there's a group of people a lot of people you know attack me for this but this is a true this is sahih this is this is a valid source uh there's a group of people they go directly from their grave to the presence of being you know in the one's presence like just open up you know there's no there's no judgment for us you know and you know he's like where do you think you're going you think you're going to enter paradise yes well where's your judgment i didn't see that you got a judgment and they say well didn't you read the quran he's like of course i read the quran but where does it say that you get that you get to enter paradise you know like without any accountability mm-hmm. and he says we had to endure what we endured and we had to go through what we had to go through and as a result of your patience as a result of what you did as a result of x y and z so this is what the ayah refers to and so Ridwan opens up the, the gates of paradise for them right so um now back to your original question was the quran revealed to all of them it could have been and it could have not been but they know the angels know that there is a Quran. You know, for example, when the again going back to the story of the Miraj, when the Prophet Sallallahu ascended, you know, the ascension. Um when he was with Gabriel, Gabriel knocked on the door. The gatekeeper said, Who is it? And a Jibreel, he says, I am Gabriel, who is with you? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hal Bu'ith, the message, the message of prophethood, is he now a prophet? He says, Yes, he was. Now, so the angels don't even know that the Prophet ﷺ has become the Prophet. So they know of him, they know of the Qur'an, they know all of this, you know, but they don't know what's going on on earth yet. You know what I mean? Some of them do, some of them do, but uh, not all of them do. Because each angel has his own, like, they have their own job description, basically. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And for whatever it's worth, angels outnumber human beings in, like, the trillions and gazillions we can't even imagine the prophet sallallahu said that there's no space between the heavens and the earth that is equal to four fingers except that there's an angel prostrating to god like there's these uh, big old angels the big angels there's, there's huge angels there's small angels big angels we don't know oh, okay so they they, yeah. they differ in size different size different power different yeah <laughs> so Gabriel, for example, let me give you an example. Uh, have you heard of the, the story of uh, Lut, the people of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes, and that would be my next question. Um, mm. I, like, continue on with what you're saying, but I have a question in regards to about that. Okay. So the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, when when the three angels came to Abraham, right? So basically, 
Gabriel, Michael, and Israfel. They came to they came to Abraham in the form of human beings, right? And mm-hmm. he went out and you know he 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 slaughtered an animal. He cooked it for them, and you know, and they're like, ah, uh-uh, we're not going to eat. I would just say, he was scared of them because they don't look like they're from around here. You're you're travelers. You don't want to eat. What's going on? They're like, don't worry. We're actually sent from God. You know, we're God sent. It's like, oh, okay, all right. Now I understand. Okay, so you're angels then. Yes, and then uh, we're here to destroy. You know, these people of Lut, the, the people of your cousin, basically, because mm-hmm. they had fallen into all all kinds of uh, foul things. Right, and Sarah, his wife. Abraham's wife. <laughs> what is the angel's beef with his wife? That's what I need to, or not, not Abraham's wife, but Lot's wife. That was my question. But go, go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, no. Sarah laughed. She kind of giggled. She was like, "Ha ha ha!" You know, finally they're gonna get. What's <laughs> gonna come to them? You know what I mean? But then they gave her the good news. Oh, by the way, you have a son coming to you. His name is Ishaq, Isaac. Are you guys making fun of me? How am I going to have a son and have the, the Ba'li Shaykh on Kabir? And this is my husband. He's an old man. Are well, you just making fun of me? He's like, listen, God says it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you mentioned something the other day that God has a sense of humor. You know what I mean? Why does God highlight the fact that she giggled at the fact, you know, that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah are going to get destroyed now? You know, why does God highlight that? It's like, ah, finally, it's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, she Mm -hmm. felt some sort of happiness, you know what I mean? And a believer, when they have this sense of, like, finally, you know what I mean? It's God is highlighting this is because um, it's a sense of relief for us, right? Mm -hmm. For a believer to see rectification happen, it's a sense of relief for us. Mm -hmm. So... Now, back to your question, because if I go on with that, I'm, done. I'm not going to stop, but back to your question. Well, no, like, that goes back to Noah living 950 years and then telling God, like, wipe them all out. And then, because if they start having children, they're going to be bad, too. And it's not worth it, so just go ahead and take care of all of them. Mm, mm. One of my favorite parts as well. But, <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> I want to know why the angels have such beef with Lot's wife, because that keeps coming up throughout the entire Quran of like, remember when we delivered Lot, except his wife. (laughs) They they make that specification so often. And I'm just, why all all the beef? Like, what did she do so so horribly that they have it out for this woman? Mm. Um, You know what? You just highlighted something that's actually kind of interesting to me. Uh, this is why I'm gonna be I'm gonna be posting the stories of the messengers on YouTube, mm-hmm. inshallah, very soon, because um, it's very very important. There's so many things that are in the Quran and that are in the Sunnah, like of what the Prophet sallallahu has taught us, that are not highlighted in the Quran. So Lot's wife, what she did was she was a whistleblower. Lot, anytime a stranger would come. Anytime a stranger would come to their town and everything, he would hide them because he knew what his people would do. They would take them, they would grape, you know, they would mm-hmm. do all these kind of things that are non-consensual and so and so on and so forth. So what she would do, is she, and he started like he started basically saying all kinds of stuff. Like, listen, it's better if you guys leave this town. You guys, right. you bet, you better not be here. You guys better not, you know. And they're like, no, oh, it's okay. Just you know, just just take care of us. They didn't reveal that they were angels yet. They didn't tell him. Right. By the way, this is you know, this is my boy Michael. This is my boy Islafi either. You know, he hid them in his house. Sure enough, who goes and and tells the town? His wife. And they were like, they didn't you. yeah, she she did them. She did them bad. Um, now. Lut, alayhi salam, he was very, very scared for them, uh-huh. right? So these people just pounding on his door, very small, very small house. Obviously, their houses are not like the apartments that we're living in and stuff like that, or the houses that we're living in. They wanted to just destroy them. So what ended up happening is one of the angels, they gave like a scream or they threw something and they became blind. And they're like, we're going to come back in the morning. We're going to get you. Right, we're coming for these three men. We're coming for these three men. We're we're gonna get them. 
<laughs> and so that's when the angels basically revealed to Lut alayhi salam, listen, we're actually not human beings. We're actually angels. We're sent from God, right? We're mm -hmm. here to destroy them. We're here to take care of them. But we just wanted a little bit of time. We wanted to see if they're going to be patient. We wanted to see if they're going to come back to God. So it's not that the angels have beef with them. Mm -hmm. It's that the angels wanted good for them, but they wanted to see it for themselves. That's why they're like, we're still going to destroy this town. But let's just wait until until morning time, because maybe in morning, by the time morning time comes, they might have made toba. They might have they might well, have they come back. The bag. Exactly. So morning time came. Lut salam with his two daughters. He ended up leaving. His wife was following, and they said, "You better not look back. If you look back, whoever looks back, they're from there." And sure enough, his wife followed afterwards, but she ended up looking back. She is of those people. She's stupid. Right? So <laughs> she had a chance to be. <laughs> so even with, even with her dirty self, she still had a chance to be saved if she didn't look back. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So she did that to herself in a sense. She's stupid. Wow. <laughs> Can't. <laughs> is, it, is it a lie? <laughs> Did I say yeah. any lies? That's that is wild. So where does it say in the Quran that she was the whistleblower? Because I didn't read that part at all. Yeah, no, there's a lot of things that are, aren't really highlighted in the Qur'an because it's unnecessary to highlight them. Uh -huh. It's like you kind of draw up your conclusion, like you understand, you know what I mean? So, for example, uh, for example, when, um, like, for example, when Moses' mother put him in the little basket, right, and then she put him right. in the river, it's not like it, it was just one time that it happened that she put him in the river. No, it was be, it was several times that she put him in the river. But what happened was she would basically tie the rope. She would basically put like a string and she would attach it to her house or somewhere it's hit. It's attached to this little box that's sitting in the river, right? So that when the when the people of Fir'aun, when the people of Pharaoh would come to see, inspect every house, they would do it literally 24 hours a day. Right. They would go in and inspect to see if there's a newborn boy. Right. And then they would put that kid to, to death. Right. So every day she would basically put that child, Moses, in that little basket and she would, you know, basically put the basket in the in the in the water. But it would be attached to a string. Right. Until mm -hmm. one time it happened that she completely forgot to tie that because it was very quick. They're on they're right down the street. Right. So if they saw her like, hold on, she's done. You know what I mean? So she put him in the thing and she forgot to tie the rope or she forgot to tie the string. And that's when the, the river took Moses away to Pharaoh's house. But right? then she became Moses's wet nurse. Right. Exactly. Yeah. OK. But see, all of that is not highlighted in the Quran because it's not relevant. You know what I mean? It's I not see. like it's going to be. Yeah. So the point is, it's not that. The point is not how it happened, is the fact that it did happen. Mm. You know what I mean? So are, do we know those details just from remnants of like the original scripture and like the Torah and the, the gospel? Is that like we're, we just put those pieces together and then fill in what's missing in the Quran? Got it. Yeah. So the, the whole point of the Quran, you know, it's one of the things that a lot of people kind of pride themselves on is that the Quran doesn't deny these other books. Obviously, we don't deny these other books. But mm -hmm. what do those books say about what's going on here? So the Quran is what Allah SWT says, what God says is مصدقاً لما معهم. It is giving truth to what is with them, but mm -hmm. it's polishing a lot of the things that they went astray with. You know what I mean? So, for example, there's a story of, you know, on Fridays we read Surah Al-Kahf, the chapter of the cave. Mm -hmm. Surah Al-Kahf, it begins talking about, with, you know, these, these seven sleeping saints is what the Christians basically called them. 
right? They basically, there's like this whole thing that, you know, it's spread through the Syriac churches where there's this, they commemorate the seven sleeping saints, people fast, there's parades that go around and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. they commemorate these people. And they basically made them into seven sleeping saints. The Quran, the Quran actually says, they're just a group of people that they're just a group of young men that mm -hmm. believed in God and we increased them in, 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 in guidance. That's it. They weren't saints. They weren't scholars. They weren't angels. They weren't hovering around on air. They're just a group of young guys. And God goes out of his way to highlight how they were young guys. I want chicken. I want food. You know. Right. Listen. Stop haggling over. You know how long we slept, right? Stop. Like, oh, maybe a day. We part of a day. We slept for this much. How long did you sleep? Ah, no, I know. I heard you. You were sawing logs. You know what I mean? It's amazing that God highlights these little things over here, and then the next one comes in. So God knows how long you, you slept. Just go find someone that's going to buy food. If I buy, find someone that's going to pick out the best food because we're starving, man. I've been hungry for a day. They had no idea that they were sleeping for 309 years. They had no idea. They had no clue. Right? So, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God highlights again. They, they'll say that they're three and then the fourth of them is their dog. And then they'll say that they're four, uh, or, you know, uh, five is their dog. And then they'll say seven, eight, and seven. They'll say that they're seven, and then eight is uh, their, their dog. God doesn't tell you how much they are because that's not important. Like, who cares if it's three or four or five or six or seven? Who cares? The point is, look at what they did. You know what I mean? That's right. the whole point. So the point is, is God is highlighting, Rabbukum alamu. It's not relevant how many they are because there's people that have literally pulled out their hair because of how many there are people have gotten into debates because of how many there are people have have written essays because of how many they are they tried to say that the dog was a servant and it was an actual human being like i don't even understand how the hell do you come up with that conclusion because god even says you know that he's got his paws laid out how can you say that a human being <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah so but yeah, no, it's just very interesting that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights certain things and he doesn't highlight a lot of things, you know what I mean? It's just because there's certain things that you really have to understand that this is what's relevant, this is what matters, and this is what's important right here. You know what I mean? Focus on what's real. That's understandable. But I got to say, the number seven shows up so many times that I just cannot see it as a coincidence. Like the number, mm -hmm. like seven, seven heavens, seven, un like the, the, the seven uh, universes, uh, just the, the seven men that you were just talking about. Like it, it just is, is very repetitive in the, in the Torah. It has seven worlds and like, it's, it just keeps coming up. So I just think there's additional, significance to the number seven i don't know no you're Maybe absolutely right <laughs> there's <laughs> there's seven layers of earth you have the inner core outer core mantle so on and so forth you have seven layers of earth you have seven layers of the sky before you reach universe you know you have the exosphere thermosphere stratosphere and so on and so forth until you get to the to the first universe once you get to the first universe then you have seven heavens right right and then God created everything in six days, and then on the seventh, he rested, right? So that's a very common thing. And on Earth, thing. we have the seven seas. We have the seven continents. Like, we have, like, so exactly. what does it mean? <laughs> that, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm sure there is significance to it. There, I mean, one of my teachers did once upon a time. They did tell me the significance of it, but I forgot. So I can't really, I can't explain it. You know what I mean? I don't want to say Call something. tonight. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I am going to follow. I, I am going to keep, write that down, though, like to ask one I of your it. teachers. Because I, well, that. Even before joining Islam, the number seven has bothered me. Like, <laughs> I've been seeing it everywhere, so I need to know this. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna look into it. Yeah, no, there is certainly a significance to it. Seven days, seven heavens, and then we have what? Seven, even going around the Kaaba, you know, doing the doing our, you know, circuits around the Kaaba. It's seven times, and going between Safa and Marwa is seven times, right? Between the two mountains of Safa and Marwa, that's seven times as well. So okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that it. said God did not rest. No, ثم استوى على العرش يدبر الأمر. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had stayed on His throne, right? But what I said was, and then God rested. That was from the Bible, mm-hmm. right? See, that was from the Bible. That's from the Torah or, or from the Gospel. So that's what they said. So that's how that's how my brain works. You know what I mean? It's just mm-hmm. hard Like some people are like, ah, 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 hang on a second. That's like, no, that's yeah. what it says over there, and it's also it's also in the Quran as well. It's just you know said differently. It doesn't mean that God just khalas is just sitting up there with the billah with like a cup of coffee or just chilling, not knowing what's going on on earth. No, it doesn't it, that's not what I said. You know what I mean? It just means that he's sitting on the throne now. Right? That's what the that's what the Quran says. So so we know how large the angels are that are holding God's throne. So I'm assuming we cannot begin to conceptualize with our human brain how large God's throne is. If we can't even conceptualize how big this universe is, Facts. How, how are we even going to go up against that? Like we can't even we can't even begin. We're we're so limited. Honestly, mm-hmm. human beings, we, we have this type of arrogance for some reason. And I'm not, obviously, I'm not saying you, but I'm saying like human beings, they have this type of arrogance that they think that they could figure all of this stuff out. People mm-hmm. have literally went insane. People have literally been admitted into psychiatric facilities because they're trying to figure out where did God come from? Where is God going? They're really trying to figure all this stuff out. You know, uh, we can. We're limited in every, every, everything about the human being is, is limited. We're limited in our voice. We're limited in how far we can see. We're limited in how strong we are. We're limited in how far we can go without having food. We're limited in how long we can go without sleeping. We're limited in our intellects. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're limited in, in, in how many breaths that we take. We're limited. It, we're, literally everything about the human beings is limits. Right? Everything about the human being is limits. So this idea of not submitting to the limitless God is just beyond me. I just find it absolutely amazing. You know, I'll, I'll submit to my stomach. I'll submit to my desires. But I, to him, I won't submit. Uh, good luck, man. <laughs> that was a whole word. Mm. That was a word. <laughs> I'm going to write that down later. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> she's taking it in she's taking it all in I am. I'm, just, I'm just taking everything in because like it's it's oh i I just can't conceptualize. So back to paradise where it says there's billions, there's billions of version. Did you say billions of versions of paradise within that one paradise or like billions, billions of, of gardens, billions of gardens. Yeah. Okay. Jannatun tajri min tahtiha al-anhar. Gardens with rivers flowing beneath it. So say for example, Say for example, um, say for example, we're in paradise, right? Everyone has their own section of paradise. Do you think that it's just one small area in paradise that you have? Like if us in this world, us in this dunya, people have different, you know, oh, this is my vacation home in Florida. This is my vacation home in Turkey. I I have a place in in Dubai or whatever. Mm-hmm. If this is something that we could attain here in this world, do you think that people in paradise they only have one spot and it's just that one little area? No, 
the more you do, the more the more closer you are to God, the more actions that you do with God, uh, the more elevated you are with God, the more properties you're going to have, right? And not only that, there's people that would have been in paradise, like their their homes are prepared in paradise, but after a certain they have done so much wrong that they're going to be staying in the fire, right? They're going to be staying in hell. And then people in paradise are just going to be walking around, and obviously there's going to be angels there and stuff like that. Who does that house belong to? Oh, this house belonged to so and so, but they're in the fire. They're not going to. They're not going to have it. You can have it if you want. This huge palace and this home and this garden and stuff like that. Yeah. So in other words, like you said, oh, they stupid. You know. They <laughs> they <did nothing>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, this paradise has been prepared for the people of taqwa, for the people of piety, for the people that want to get close to God. You know what I mean? It's not for the people of evil. It's not for the people. This abode of eternity, this abode of this this abode, you know, Darus Salam, this abode of perfection, of peace and bliss. It's for the people that don't want corruption on earth and they don't want status on earth. They don't care for being famous. They don't care for power. They don't care for competing for, um, you know, it's all about me. They don't care for any of that. They don't want that, right? Mm -hmm. They don't want corruption on earth and they don't want to see all this stuff happening on earth. That's, that, that's corruption, right? That's what paradise is for, right? If you want that status, if you want that fame, if you want that attention, you want that corruption, or you don't mind it, then you're in big trouble with God. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that makes sense. Someone in the comments just asked to ask you, and y'all better not have set me up. This better not be something haram, because I'll track you down. Somebody asked me to ask you, what's Mahad? M A H. Ma Mahad? Ask him, ask you about Mahad? M A H A R? Mahad. Oh. Mahad is like a dowry. I think they are trying to set you up, but <gasps> Mahad, is, uh, <laughs> Mahad is a dowry, right? So it's basically like some sort of monetary gift that a husband gives a wife. Uh, you know, that the fiance man gives the fiance woman as a, as a gift, as like a, you know, like a generous gift uh, before they enter into the marriage. So that's what Mahar means. Whoever asked that needs to make dua. You should feel absolutely ashamed of yourself. Yeah, people got to be told. I don't understand. Uh, respectfully, respectfully speaking, guys, when I, when I do these live streams, this is actually something that I, I talk to my teacher about, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for some reason, I don't know what kind of etiquette people have or what people are growing up with. They think that if I'm trying to answer someone's questions or, you know, suddenly they just, they just, their, their mind goes in, in a place where it shouldn't go. My intention is to educate, inshallah. My intention is to, is to teach with a, with a, with a lovely way. Uh, not my intention is not my intention is not what some of these people are making a, a joke of, mm -hmm. right? And it actually hurts me, and and I'm saying this respectfully. It actually hurts me that people that's where their head goes, you know. Right. Um, I'm not something. This is something that someone asked me, but I don't know if you were on the live stream at that point. But someone had had joined the live and they were asking me about dua and something like that, and then. They, people keep asking, is he married? Is he married? I'm going to answer this once and for all, okay? No, I'm not married. No, I'm not engaged. And one of the reasons for that is because when things do get real, it's comments like that that make someone that's a potential want to walk away. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the fact that some of these people are drying up these assumptions it's not mm -hmm. fair to me, and it's not a fair to if I am ever going to get married. It's not going to be fair to my future wife. It's not going to be fair to that. So we have to really kind of reassess ourselves. 
Mm-hmm. We have to really assess ourselves in, in, in the etiquettes that we have. You wouldn't be asking someone like Mufti Mank these kind of questions. You wouldn't be asking Zakir Naik these kind of questions. You wouldn't mm-hmm. be asking Omar Sulaiman these kind of questions. What makes it so agreeable or so okay that you're asking me these kind of questions? Mm-hmm. Right? It's something that I don't want to bring up, but because people are going to constantly bring it up, I have to address it now. You know? And so. That's- yeah, I th- that's only fair. Like y'all are forgetting that Islam puts very much a, a lot of emphasis on consent, and I think there is a lot of misconcept, or there there's just a lot of um, just double standard going around. Where if men were in these comments saying these things to me, like "Are you married?" Are the, y'all would find that disrespectful. You would oh, find would them, as, them as harassing or as, mm-hmm. as, as harassing. This is harassment. Like we, we are we are talking about an educational subject when it comes to the Quran. It's even it, we're even discussing a holy book right now. So it's absolutely unacceptable, especially considering that every live that I've been that I've seen. With a Bustani, he's made clear on nearly every live, guys, I do not want to discuss this. That is him setting a boundary. And every person that then comes in and keeps asking him whether he's married, whether he's single, etc., you are breaking consent in that moment. And that is completely, whether, whether you're Muslim or not, Consent is consent. And when you break consent, that makes you into a predator. Period. Period. It doesn't matter if you're a woman or not. It doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. That's disrespectful either way. And so what we want to do is we want to set the same standard on both sides. If it is not welcome, stop saying those things that's completely unacceptable thank you very much megan i really really do appreciate that i really do and it's 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 good that it's coming from a sister too because it's one thing for a guy to say it when it's coming from a sister it's a different it's a different vibe you know what i mean it's like no okay limits have to be observed you know so but anyway and that's a shame it's a shame that it's ignored if a guy says it or it's it's a shame that it's not taken as serious that the consent factor is taken isn't taken as seriously as when a guy says it i think that there is this for some reason something is that i find pretty just runs rampant is since women have a history of being oppressed by by men they almost find um, saying disrespectful things or saying things against men's consent, they almost find it as, oh, you'll be fine. You're, you're, you're the, you're, you're the more privileged anyway. And Mm -hmm. I just find that completely, completely disgusting. Like, and, and that is, that's just, I, I just can't imagine how uncomfortable that is because we always, we always love to talk about, when things happen to us, or not love to talk about, it. it's not it's not something that we 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 love to talk about. But I'm saying, we continue to bring up the fact that when something is happening to us, the reason why we don't bring it up or the reason why we don't report people is because we're not believed. But here we are. A man is telling y'all that this makes him uncomfortable. This is going against his consent, and y'all y'all keep going so i know somebody said please move on but this i appreciate it yeah emphasis needs to be placed there i appreciate it i hope someone got that on the screen recording so i could just (laughs) replay it it. a little bit louder for the people in the back but yeah alhamdulillah Mm -hmm. all right yeah but uh i appreciate that but uh yeah i mean alhamdulillah like i just see everyone's comments just completely 180 degrees the other way now so <laughs> <laughs> excellent <laughs> thank um, you so much for that there was a good question because this mm. ac- this question actually applies to me as well someone asked what about a what happens uh when a revert has tattoos 
Like, what are they? What are they supposed to do about that? It's completely fine. In the, in Islam, don't you know that Islam completely obliterates everything that happened before it? Tattoos, whatever it is, all of that is wiped away. You know what I mean? You didn't know. You didn't know. You know, so just, it's okay. If you want to get rid of it, get rid of it. If you don't want to get rid of it, if it's something that's going to harm you, don't do it. If it's something that's going to harm you, because I, I it's this a question that uh, came up to me once upon a time where, you know, the tattoo was in a very sensitive place. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, uh, their physician said, if you are going to go along with this, it's going to harm you very, very much. So the mm-hmm. fatwa in this, in this sense is you don't harm yourself. Right. So the fatwa in this sense is the, 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 the physician becomes the mufti. The physician gives a he gives the, the, the ruling. You know what I mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God already knows that you're sincere. God already knows that you, you, you know, had you had this guidance from before or had you understood this thing from before, you wouldn't have done it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just let it go, inshallah. It's fine. You know what I mean? If you have tattoos or whatever, Allah said it is what it is. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people that have converted to Islam. They have tattoos all over their faces and everything like that. No, they're sincere people. They're real people. They're like, mm-hmm. sometimes it makes me question my faith. Like, I'm like, man, I got, this guy's conviction, mashallah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, no, just, just, you know, if, if, if you want to get rid of it, get rid of it. If it's something that's going to harm you, let it go. Ask your doctor, inshallah, and, and, and go on from there, inshallah. Perfect. And let me see. Were there any other questions y'all wanted to add? Because I, I, don't have any questions because I still need to process <laughs> <laughs> the seven heavens and everything. <laughs> I'm gonna be okay. thinking about that for days. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I think okay. we're good. Uh, I'm actually okay. gonna jump off the live now. Um, uh, you know, there's a little bit of prayers I want to do. Inshallah. Um, I really thank you very much for coming. Any anytime you come on the live, I, Wallahi, it just you, you light up the live. Your questions are so beautiful. I, I actually enjoy it. I actually enjoy having a conversation with you because your questions are so real. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of things that you ask that a lot of people think that they know, but then once it's explained to them, they're like, whoa. You know what I mean? Like this mm-hmm. whole seven heavens and the, the universe and it turns into seven universes. And you know what I mean? A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people think that heaven is synonymous with paradise. It's not true. You know what I mean? So we have to be precise in what we think. We have to be precise in what we know. You know, the angels that we're going to see, the description of the angels, all of that stuff. So ask away, inshallah. Any Anytime you have any questions, please. I'm, just, I'm, I'm here, inshallah. Well, I always appreciate you, brother. Enjoy the rest of your night. And we'll do this again sometime. <laughs> inshallah. Sounds good. Thank you very Thanks. much for joining us. Bye. Alhamdulillah, that was Sister Megan Rice, man, she really just kind of, thank you guys, thank you guys very much for joining in, I'm actually going to jump off the live as well, um, anyone that had a question, everyone that's that's requesting, uh, forgive me, inshallah, next time I'll, I'll add you guys into the live so that we can have a conversation, um, anything good that was said? is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accept it anything bad that was said is from myself and shaitan and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgives it uh, I love you guys all for the sake of Allah Barakallahu li wa lakum Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh